Hi, Helga. Thank you for joining me this morning. Um, I'm just going to go crack straight in and say, OK, how did you come to be on this rhythmical path? Hello, Ray. Good morning. Morning. <laughs> um, yeah. How much time do we have, Ray? <laughs> lots and lots. Not. I do. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I could st I could start with um, the moment when I worked with uh, people with special needs, um, doing music things with them, um, and was looking for ways to work with broader groups and to integrate everybody to to find models for working with just everybody, um, and then suddenly after some um things i um i tried that didn't work or didn't work in the way i wanted them to work um i i um met jane at a conference jane bentley jane bentley uh, i think it was about 15 years ago um yeah, and that's how I came to be on that path because it was the initiation for me to um, realize there is something that works in the way I want it to work. Um, and then I, I started step by step and um, I visited more and more workshops and I, I tried things um, directly after this small short workshop with Jane and I realized it worked. It, so. Uh, that's why I kept being on this path because things worked. So the 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 workshop that Jane was doing was that a facilitation workshop? Oh, it was just a short, just a short thing at a um, like introduction something at a conference. Mm -hmm. And how have you built yeah. on that? Um, I remember when I came home from this workshop. Um, I went into the, the group I used to work with and I just tried some, some techniques like, yeah, go ahead playing and I'll stop. And they stopped. <laughs> <laughs> um, and these were the, the first moments when I realized there's something that works and I asked them, um, why did you stop? How did you know? Because I couldn't believe it was me. Okay. Um, doing this in such an easy way and they said um well we can see it in your eyes <laughs> wow and um yeah of course i did a lot of things with my body yeah. but I said i could see it in your eyes so i thought there's there there must be something working mm. i don't know yet what it is mm -hmm. but um i'm trying to find out what it is and 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 as a result of kind of Jane's workshop, how have you kind of, as I say, kind of build on that? You've built on it with your audience. What about with yourself and building your knowledge and your skills? Well, yeah, well, I then visited workshops um, with Matthias in Germany, and then I got to know Arthur. And <clears throat> I think I've been to all the workshops Arthur offered in Germany from this time on. Um, I got to know other facilitators and went step by step by step and did offered workshops with drum circle elements and these drum circle elements grew bigger and bigger and then i started to offer just drum circles mm -hmm. um, in the drum circle manner yeah and i i got asked um, more and more to offer things like this and that's how it developed yeah yeah and or how i grew into it yeah and yeah. we keep on and we just keep on developing and developing yeah. there's a kind of from my perspective i always see there's always a there's always a desire to learn to keep expanding which is why i go to the play shop every year because i meet people <laughs> and i expand my knowledge and my and my toolkit and yeah. stuff like that i think it's important as facilitators to keep on developing and training and moving on um so who who do you think are your major influences in the in your work um well probably arthur yeah yeah it's arthur it's um it's chain with her um um limit less yeah limit <laughs> less, um, yeah. friendliness and gentleness and 
open-heartedness. Um, so she's definitely um, a, a big influence. Um, Arthur is, um, Paul is, you are, Ben is, Matthias is, um, and of course every other facilitator I ever met and maybe every, every other person I ever worked with. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I'm, I trained as a um, systemic therapist and social worker um, and this attitude is a part of my identity too. There are influences from from people like this, from therapists, um, from the systemic, with a systemic background, um, but also with um, uh, what's, uh, body centered background, maybe. Yeah. So these are all influences um, throughout. Yeah. Have, my you, life. have yeah. you managed to take some of your? Have you managed to sort of take some of your drumming work into your kind of therapist background and bring some of your therapy work into the drumming background? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Good. <Yeah. laughs> How have you done um, that? Well, I think I never. <clears throat> um, what I learned with drum circles was working with groups. Mm. Um, I never, or during my um, social work um, work, I never have been working with groups too much. Um, and I never thought that this is the thing I'm feeling really good in. Mm -hmm. I'm at home in working with groups. And this is something that has changed totally with jump circles. I learned to feel at home in groups uh, and being the one facilitating mm -hmm. the group and not leading the group, but facilitating what happens there. So this is a role um, I learned. Yeah drum circles yeah so this is the part working with groups but i'd also say um what i learned with drum circles or what i what i combined is how how i am with myself or how i um sometimes support people being with themselves like in inviting all my parts or the parts of myself being being yeah. present like I invite um, people in the drum circle being present and, and showing up with all, with everything they are, with all their fears, yeah. and their knowledge and, and their um, um, passions and whatever. Mm. So I try to invite myself like I invite everyone in the drum circle. How yeah, this is the metaphor that um, guides me. Mm -hmm. How do you feel yeah. you who do you feel you were when you started to who you are now and how do you feel you've changed? Um, I am the same and I'm different. Um, so good answer. I mean, yeah, of course I'm the same. Um, you mean when I started with drum circles? Yeah. How do you feel? Yeah. You, yeah who were so you what? when you started and, and okay. now and how those changes have taken place? So this is must have been about 15 years ago. So I'd say I was more um, uh, concerned about techniques when I started mm. and uh, learning proper a proper technique, which I had to learn uh, to to be clear. Um, and now I think. Um, I'm using more myself and not only the techniques. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm aware of what am I doing, when am I doing it, why am I doing it, what for, and I'm more aware of letting chaos be there. I'm more aware of what am I thinking, what am I feeling at the moment. Yeah. Um, things like, oh, there's chaos, I must have been doing something wrong. Um, and then reflecting it. Um, okay, there's chaos. Let's be there, chaos. Yeah. And let's see what comes out of the chaos. And yeah. um, like appreciating, just appreciating what's there, something like this. Um, yeah, something like this, maybe. Yeah. But I'm not sure. I'm not sure who I am. <laughs> no. <laughs> 
you, you wouldn't be alone in that. But how do you how do you feel you have changed? How do you feel you have changed? I understand your style and your yeah. presence in the circle. Do you feel that the work you've done has an impact on you? Um, well, yeah. What what I said, I'm more confident in working with groups. Mm. But you you are referring to something else, I think. Just how that's impacted perhaps on you, not just as a facilitator, but you as a person. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, offering drum circle has become a part of my life, and um, and this mission of uh, creating connections, not only between people but in, inside people, and therefore being part of the development of people and of myself. Mm. Has shaped how I am and how I um, I am with myself. I'm not sure if I'm answering your question, Ray. No, you are. <laughs> Don't worry. Just... There are no wrong. There are no wrong answers. <laughs> oh, <whew. laughs> it just heard, a... I just heard. I just heard somebody saying. Uh, somebody told me you should say this more than once during a drum circle that there are no wrong notes. Yeah. It's good you say it at the beginning, but you should say it more often. Okay. I, I need it more often, she said. So, okay. yeah. Well, there are no wrong answers. So yeah. I'll, keep, I'll keep saying that as we go through. Too. <laughs> but yeah, I have it's one of my constant mantras when I do a circle is there are no wrong notes. And I drop it in as often as I can to try and, you know, reduce that anxiety in some kind of people. How do you feel your facilitation style has evolved over the years that you've been involved in this? Um, well, I think I already talked about it. Um, mm. This, this um, movement or this development from being focused on techniques, on a, on a proper te technique and kind of having a, a real um, or a specific process in mind has changed to be more or at least trying to be more present how I am in the moment, be more aware of what is there and just just being in the moment and using what is there and using yeah work with what they give me and how easy how easy was i've it done my to... homework so uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. how easy was it to make that shift or that evolution um looking back i'd say it was easy okay because it just came mm. um, but um, from from the perspective of uh, from years ago I'd say I um, there was a lot of exhaustion a lot of um, doubting myself and doubting mm -hmm. what am I doing here mm -hmm. um, and I am not at the end of this path I mean there's <laughs> still um, there's still doubt and I'm still questioning what am I doing there and um, I still have this looking into the faces of people who are con maybe probably just concentrated um, and I think they are bored or yeah. uh, whatever so and, and and making something out of it thinking I'm doing something wrong so I'm still of course I'm still in this in this process somewhere on on a way of development i think we all I don't know are where it's going to yeah <laughs> what do you think what do you think are your kind of particular strengths and and what areas would you like to co to continue developing um yeah, aren't we talking about this all the time already? Yeah, man. <laughs> um, you know what it's like. You ask the question yeah, yeah. three times to get to the real answer. Uh -huh. <laughs> Good one. <laughs> one for you. <laughs> um, yeah, I think my one of my strengths is this report thing. Mm -hmm. Building report and creating connection, first of all between me and the participants and I think it starts when people enter the room or maybe or even earlier when I'm writing an email or something like this mm -hmm. and what skills so think, do you bring to, yeah. bring to that rapport Helga sorry what skills do you bring to that rapport I 
you are a hard questioner. <laughs> Maybe it's just uh, the trying to being in rapport with myself mm -hmm. or creating rapport to myself. Mm -hmm. Maybe that that's that could be the in the moment skill maybe. And um, I mean, I've learned from Arthur creating a welcoming atmosphere. Yeah. I learned from you being gentle and friendly to people, um, however mm -hmm. they, however they are, and however they are um, being with me. Trying to be gentle and nice, I I don't always uh, succeed. <laughs> doing so. Me neither. But ah <laughs> oh, well, you better. <laughs> <laughs> but that sense of building yeah. up a rapport with people yeah. in the circle, which is really important, bringing yourself and being present for them, being in the here and now. Yeah, and knowing that um, everybody comes with his fears and. Um, Anxi anxieties mm -hmm. and insecureness or whatever and mm. wants to be seen wants to be heard so try trying at least trying to be aware of that yeah is there any particular areas you would like to develop um yes <laughs> <laughs> good answer <laughs> Um, I think I'm not telling you all of them. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, probably one of these is that I think I'm still putting too much effort in everything I'm doing. Okay. It would be so nice to do th everything a little bit easier mm. or not to, to put so much effort. This is so many times I think afterwards, oh, half of the work would have been enough. Yeah. 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 And yeah. I'm training people um, in this um, subject. So mm. I'm a trainer in this. So I'm still learning uh, and yeah. I'm a learner too. Yeah. No, I, I tend to find the same as well. Yeah. You, you tend to put in so much work. Yeah. And then, you know, well, for me anyway, I'll own this. You put so much work in that and you're exhausted at the end of it. And you tend to think, well, actually, I didn't have to put all of that in. Yeah you know only half of it worked perhaps i should have given yeah. it a bit more space and stuff like that yeah. but i tend it's really important to reflect on what we do yeah. mm -hmm. i tend to think i don't know i can only speak for myself i do a lot of reflection on the circles that i do and and think about what i do and sometimes i need to just actually go with it yeah just go with it rather than you know consistently put myself under pressure all the time yeah and maybe it's only 20% that are enough already. Yeah, no, absolutely. That's absolutely. What yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so and then you end up kind of looking inwards rather than looking outwards. Mm -hmm. what, there's there's loads of kind of anecdotal and scientific evidence about the benefits of the work we do with drumming with different groups, be it mental health, be it special needs, be mm -hmm. it um, whatever group we work in, mm -hmm. do you do you kind of have a direct experience of that yourself? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to share yeah. that? <laughs> um, I actually had one two two days ago. Um, I think okay. it was Saturday. Yeah, two days ago. Um, I had a mental health group visiting me. Okay. Uh, they about sixteen people uh, with mental health issues. Um, and they've been there for the second time and some of them have been there for the first time and one of the women being there for the first time was really not uh, she wasn't very comfortable with the the drum she had I I thought watching her I thought she's not comfortable and um, I gave some hints how to how to play not to play like this um, had to flatten the hands stuff like this um, and I thought all the time that she doesn't feel very comfortable with all mm. that. And she was the one who came to me after the drum circle and said, well, I've never done things like this before. I've never done any drumming before. I didn't know how it goes. Um, and it was so um, liberating. Wow. 
So liberating is this a is yeah. that a word? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. She just said it was so liberating, it was so much fun and this liberating was um um accompanied with this gesture, like yeah, yeah she opened her, yeah. her front. Um yeah. Fantastic. And it's so funny, isn't it, how how yeah. we read stuff that's going on, and sometimes yeah. it's so different yeah. to actually what's yeah. actually going on. Yeah, exactly. So this was one of the nicest feedbacks I got, um, especially during the last weeks. How fantastic! Yeah. And it also for me, I love feedback yeah. like that, even like negative feedback, because again, you think, well, I'm doing something right, mm -hmm. something's working, even yeah. if I'm not too sure, but yeah. I can see it working in front of me. Yeah. Which I think is awesome. Yeah. How do you go about creating a safe space? Yeah, that's an important question, Ray. Thank you. Because I think yeah. <laughs> uh, I think that is the most important thing in drum circles, or maybe in when working with people in mm. um, every way. Um, and I think the first thing I try to do is create uh, the physical space that means these days to um, to uh, care for distance of course yeah and to be aware of when when distance is um, is getting too too small when there's too less distance and trying to be aware of people um, feeling awkward maybe mm -hmm. because of that and I am still learning. Mm. So of course, that's uh, the this is a new task for me. Um, so physical space means also there are ways to come into the circle and there are ways to get out of the circle. Mm -hmm. um, so this is the physical thing, then there's um, the um, auditive Mm -hmm. Thing not not being too loud or mm -hmm. taking care of the loudness of the volume, um, and of course it's uh, the um, cognition thing. Yeah. Like there are no mistakes, and maybe saying it more often than I do. <laughs> there are no mistakes. There are no mistakes. Mm. There are no mistakes. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, and this inviting thing, inviting everybody, I try to, if there are not too many people, I try to invite everybody or to, to welcome everybody individually. I used to shake hands with everybody. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, make contact with everybody yeah. individually and to um, to invite myself uh, first of all to create a safe space for me yeah so what, if does, that, what does that entail what does that entail uh, um that means that i i i'm i try to be there um long before it starts mm -hmm. so um i'm there one at least one and a half hour before the start and I love having finished everything half an hour before people arrive because mm -hmm. they arrive half an hour too early. So um, I really try to be ready to have sorted out everything. That there's a mallet everywhere, um, stuff like this, mm -hmm. so that I can have some minutes mm -hmm. on my own. And what do you do in that kind of space? Well, if if this space is there, I don't manage to create it every mm. time no but when you do but, but you... if i do i i try to um to uh, be aware of the space that is there um i try to be aware of the instruments and where they are um and i try to be aware of myself and how i feel and mm -hmm. Yeah, but I don't want to sell this as a um, functioning model because I'm, st I'm, st I'm just trying to do it. No. Uh, so, 
Yeah. I think we all are. I think we yeah. all do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are many a time I always try and arrive early, at least an hour early, yeah. Yeah. to make sure I have 20 minutes before everyone arrives to kind of centre myself. But there are numerous occasions where I've arrived early and I've grabbed like 30 seconds before people start arriving because it's just I filled it with other stuff. Yeah. So yeah. my my ideal is the same as yours, is to create some space to centre myself and kind yeah. of be how yeah. can I serve what's going to be happening around me? And it's good that I'm telling this uh, to you now because it makes uh, it's like an, uh, something I will do next time, maybe more, <laughs> even more concentrated, more consciously. More, yeah, more consciously. And con so yeah. when your sessions kind of kicked off and it's running, what mm. do you find yourself focusing on? Do you find yourself focusing on the experience of individuals and participation or the music or the experience of the group or all of it? What kind of is running through your mind? I I try to perceive everything. Yeah. But of course that's not possible and I only know what I'm doing. I'm I'm not knowing what I'm not. <laughs> or what yeah. I'm not perceiving. So um I think I I look into the faces. Mm -hmm. I'm very vis visual. Um I'm listening to the rhythms. Are there, is there only one rhythm? Mm -hmm. Are there different rhythms? Are people playing together? Is there a relationship? Is there any kind of con connection? Yeah. Um, yeah, so things like this. Yeah. The experience of the individuals who looked comfortable, who doesn't look yeah. comfortable, all this stuff that's kind I of mean, racing around. If there are people sitting there like this, um, and I'm intrigued, we touched on this before we started our interview, yeah. Um, Helga, but the now we're living in a kind of different normal for the moment, but how that also affects how we work as facilitators mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. The fact that we now have to take recognition of distance and instrument swapping and cleanliness and masks and all that kind of stuff as well as everything else we used to do as well how's that gone for you um yeah apart from that i'm really happy that i can do drum circles at the mm. moment mm. i realize this a uh, challenge to do both to yeah. create connections and to uh, keep distance yeah and there's a contradiction and sometimes it's incredibly hard to to bridge it but you, there's you also you, yeah go on, go on after you sorry no you you <laughs> do you find you... your style has changed or do you find it really difficult to make that connection do you have to be bigger do you how has that kind of worked no i think my style hasn't changed um no, I don't think so. But it it, uh, it depends on the locations. Mm. Um, sometimes, but it's not in every not been in every group I worked with now. But sometimes I think these spaces are really valuable spaces, like spaces uh, creating also space for listening. Mm -hmm. But I haven't experienced it in every drum circle I am I've done until now post COVID mm. or or peri COVID drum circles <laughs> but it's something else that we need to carry with us and be uh, and be considerate of yeah and that's hard yeah it's really hard because yeah. I tend to forget about it I tend to forget about distance and um about con contagious being contagious or mm -hmm. contagion contagious yeah um because there is something that shall be contagious in a drum circle yeah like the rhythm and the mood and and the groove there's so so many things i want to jump over from from person to person and yeah. others uh, not so <laughs> <laughs> and it's funny we touched on before where we where we've kind of been brought up with this idea that we we're in tight tight circles People are kind of almost shoulder to shoulder and it's a sound bowl and it's rhythm. And now we're having to deal with like 
space yeah. and distance and yeah. trying to bridge that space and distance yeah. as well it's yeah. yeah and as you say it's not easy yeah it's hard no but absolutely better than nothing yeah no exactly better than, uh, better than nothing and i um what what i see and and hear is people are being so thankful for having this connecting experience yeah for being able to go out and to do something with other people and to be in a community and then creating a safe space is really valuable i think yeah but there will always people be um we are also excluding people when offering something like this because there are always people who are more afraid and there are people who really are careful and stay at home because they have special risks mm -hmm. um, and i try to be aware that we also are excluding them so and i'm not very co very comfortable with that yeah yeah i hear you yeah yeah, we have to think about that actually. Seeing these really videos important. and pictures of people being in a drum circle might make um, people afraid. Yeah. Although we are keeping distance, yeah, it doesn't look like at the pictures. It doesn't look like we are keeping distance. Yeah, uh, it just looks like and 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 um, it sounds like people are together. So and people are close and this create might create um anxieties yeah no Here. absolutely yeah. no absolutely i get that how do you see your role in the session i am the facilitator <laughs> yeah um and i'm totally with what i learned from arthur there i'm yeah i'm a facilitator i try to make things easy yeah but do you find yourself yeah. as i said we've, we've kind of touched on this already but do you find yourself concentrating on the well-being of the group uh, the participation of the group the your ability to provide them with skills in order to participate their wellness their enjoyment how do you kind of see that role of yours yeah you already mentioned everything so okay yeah but <laughs> yeah connection connection is uh, my my buzzword yeah like connection between the people but also inside yeah but people. that kind of nuts and bolts style because we work with lots of different audiences do you yeah. find that nuts and bolts i don't know nuts and do? bolts style i don't know what it um the, 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 oh my goodness that's a really, really good question <laughs> Sorry. no that the very the very foundation of what we do yeah the very skill set the very foundation of the skill set of what we have do you find that changes with each group that you work with varying skills ah, okay. <clears throat> mm, not really okay not really of course i'm different in different groups yeah a little bit yeah. but not at the font mm -hmm. it's still about creating connections and trying to give everyone the possibility to have a good time yeah and to enjoy <clears throat> yeah of course i'm i'm a little bit different when i'm offering um more training like session with other issues well i'm talking more i'm not a big talker um, this is actually something I should develop more. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Here's your opportunity. <laughs> Here now, yeah. <laughs> um, so, but I'm talking more when it's about topics, yeah. when it's about um, inclusion or um, yeah. about awareness or other topics. But that sense of the, the Helga that turns up to a to a community gig to the Helga mm -hmm. that turns up to a mental health gig or, or yeah. the Helga that turns yeah. up to a special needs gig. There is a thread that runs through them and the thread yeah. is connectivity. Yeah. So and although our style might change, yeah, maybe just a little bit. Yeah. We are still the, the drive is still that connectivity. Yeah, exactly. 
so how do, do you feel that your style changes a little bit between each of the groups well a little bit um i'm if there's a um, corporate group and i'm getting paid really well yeah, yeah, yeah. So i'm more in this oh my god i have to do something for this uh, being paid yeah they are not paying me for um getting out of their way <laughs> yeah 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 yes yeah and that's really interesting, no i have this in mind and it's not yeah so sorry no no that's really interesting is it There's that sense of because uh, i'm being and i have this with a lot of my groups is because i'm being yeah. paid to do this yeah. i should be doing something yeah yeah and, and i get the corporate angle particularly can you tell me a bit more about your experience of kind of that pressure to do something yeah the, i mean that's the the most important part is uh uh, what what comes first into my mind is this um i'm not getting paid for um for witnessing what happens <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. so um i remember one of these corporate drum circles where they also had a training the whole day so they they had a whole day training with another trainer and um, i was invited to do a drum circle at the end so I knew there already was a kind of talking about what happens in this group. And this was a place where I offered some metaphors, like me metaphors like, um, look, we are all doing different stuff. We are all playing different instruments. Mm -hmm. um, we all have a different pace, but something is connecting us and asking about what, what is the connection now? And what is the connection in your work? And I just saw this CEO um, taking notes. <laughs> <laughs> so this was uh, something I offered in this session. It might be completely different in another session mm. and in other co corporate settings. But compared the Helga that does that kind of corporate pressure to the Helga in a special needs yeah. setting and i might say the same in a special needs setting if mm -hmm. i feel like it is the right thing to say there mm. and that comes to us I... reading groups sorry that comes down to us being able to read groups um yeah maybe something like this or to at least to have an idea of what is going on in this group i never know what is going on exactly I don't think I can read groups or I don't think there is something I can read, like a book. Yeah. So what I try to use is my perception of yeah. what, what I see, what I hear, what I feel, and knowing it is my perception. Yeah. And then that's all I have, knowing that's all I have. And of course, I, I have to use it. There's nothing else I can <laughs> so I have to use it. And sometimes I trap into this trap or yeah, I fall trap into, into this trap. trap, fall into this trap thinking that's reality, what I what I yeah. see. Yeah. Um, and the most oft uh, the, th the trap um, I step into most often is thinking people are bored because they are concentrated. I think mm. we all know this. Yeah. This facial um, concentration thing. Mm. I think yeah, they, I think that's the trap totally that I bored. Into. Sorry? That's the trap that I fall into a lot as yeah, well. Yeah. Yeah. And the, the sense of I've got to go out there and do something or I've got to do something because they look bored yeah. or I'm being paid for it. I've, I've sometimes managed to let it go the, the, the more I've been doing this, but still it still nags at the back of my head occasionally. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, maybe that's one of the hardest decisions in a drum circle. Shall I go into to, to save something or to be there to show that I'm there to show that I care? Mm -hmm. Or is caring just staying out of the circle and letting them do their thing? How do you balance that now? Mm. I think my body does. Okay. I talked uh, um, with a colleague this morning um, who helped me yesterday in a drum circle and we talked about this issue and um, about this question going into the circle and um, 
I think it's often just my body that does something. Yeah. Steps yeah. into or just stays out. And of course, I, I try to, to look in the faces. Are they now scared with the groove becoming more a rumble or mm. are they excited and do they look excited? Yeah. So it's using yeah. everything around you still, isn't it? And, and trying, trying not to put yourself think, under pressure. Yeah. Trying to use, yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. So when you leave a workshop, you've packed all the drums away into your van or car or whatever it is, and you jumped in and turned the ignition and off you go. Chocolate. What do you, what, <laughs> what do you hope you've left behind? Uh, oh, no, not my chocolate. <laughs> 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 I'm eating my chocolate. Um, a good, uh, a good feeling, a good that people feel safe and comfortable with themselves mm -hmm. and with others that they feel they are part of something mm. bigger than themselves. Yeah, and they are an, an important part of something. Um, yeah, m maybe, but that's already um, a, a big, big thing, maybe liberated somehow, like this woman two days before. Yeah. Liberated and connected. Yeah. And just had, f maybe just had fun. I'm content if they had fun. Mm. Not everybody has to, to grow and to. Yeah. No, nope, that's. They true. had fun. I'm content. Um, yeah. Do uh, Do you find yourself reflecting on the circle as as you drive along? That went well. That didn't work well. Yeah. Uh, hopefully, of yeah. yeah. If there's somebody with me, um, I'm always asking, "What did you perceive? What was your impression? And how did you feel?" Yeah. Um, and I love these conversations because it's always another perspective. Yeah. And sometimes I have a camera with me, so I have a look at the videos and I'm excited where I heard the one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, aren't we all? Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Helga, that kind of brings our session to an end. Thank oh, you. So, pretty. Thank you so <laughs> much for sharing this morning. I really, really appreciate taking you taking time out of your day. It was a pleasure, Ray. Thank you. No, you do all the hard work. I just get to answer the time. Quest, ask the questions. Mm -hmm. So take Thank care. Thank you for creating this safe space for... No, <laughs> takes two. It takes mm -hmm. two. But no, it's been wonderful. Thank you so much.